Welcome to our countdown of the top 10 brutal presidential assassinations in history. From shocking betrayals to political turmoil, these moments have left an indelible mark on the course of nations. 10. Patrice Lumumba The assassination of Patrice Lumumba, the first Prime Minister of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, occurred in January 1961. Lumumba's government faced opposition from various quarters, including wealthy Congolese elites, regional leaders seeking autonomy, and foreign interests. In September 1960, just months after assuming office, Lumumba was dismissed from his position by President Joseph Kasavubu. Subsequently, he was placed under house arrest. In January 1961, Lumumba attempted to escape from house arrest with the intention of seeking asylum in a different African country. However, his escape was short-lived. Lumumba was captured by forces loyal to Colonel Joseph Mobutu, the Congolese army chief of staff who had turned against him. Lumumba was subsequently handed over to Katangi separatist forces led by Moise Chambe, who was supported by Belgian and Western interests. Lumumba was brutally tortured and ultimately executed in Katanga province in January 1961. His death was officially confirmed on February 13, 1961. 9. Salvador Allende Salvador Allende, the Marxist president of Chile, was overthrown in a military coup on September 11, 1973, marking the end of his presidency and his life. The coup was led by General Augusto Pinochet and backed by elements of the Chilean armed forces, as well as by the United States government. As the military closed in on the palace, Allende reportedly took his own life rather than surrendering to the coup forces. The official account maintained by the Pinochet regime claimed that Allende committed suicide with an AK-47 rifle that had been a gift from Fidel Castro. However, many believe it was an assassination. 8. Park Chung-hee The assassination of Park Chung-hee, the president of South Korea, occurred on October 26, 1979. Park had been in power for over 18 years, having initially risen to power through a military coup in 1961. On the day of the assassination, Park Chung-hee was attending a dinner party at the Blue House, the presidential residence in Seoul. During the gathering, he was shot and killed by Kim Jae-gyu, the director of the Korean Central Intelligence Agency, KCIA, who was also present at the event. After shooting Park, Kim Jae-gyu attempted to stage a coup d'etat by seizing control of the Blue House and the military headquarters. However, his coup attempt ultimately failed, and he was arrested shortly afterward. Park Chung-hee's assassination plunged South Korea into a period of political uncertainty and instability. 7. James A. Garfield The assassination of the 20th U.S. President James A. Garfield occurred on July 2, 1881. Garfield was shot by Charles J. Guteo, a mentally unstable individual who harbored delusions of grandeur and believed he deserved a government position as a reward for his support of Garfield's presidential campaign. On the morning of July 2, 1881, Garfield arrived at the Baltimore and Potomac Railroad Station in Washington, D.C., accompanied by his two sons. As he entered the station, Guteo approached him from behind and fired two shots at close range. One bullet grazed Garfield's arm, while the other lodged itself in his abdomen. Following the shooting, chaos ensued as bystanders and officials rushed to assist Garfield and apprehend Guteo. Garfield remained conscious and was able to walk, but the severity of his injuries became apparent as he began to lose blood and experience increasing pain. Garfield was transported to the White House, where a team of doctors, led by Dr. Willard Bliss, attended to him. Despite the best efforts of the medical team, Garfield's condition continued to deteriorate over the following weeks. He developed a high fever and suffered from severe internal injuries. On September 19, 1881, nearly three months after being shot, James A. Garfield succumbed to his injuries and passed away at the age of 49. 6. William McKinley William McKinley, the 25th President of the United States, was assassinated on September 6, 1901, while attending the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo, New York. McKinley was greeting visitors at the Temple of Music when he was approached by Leon Zalgos, an anarchist and disillusioned steelworker. Zalgos had concealed a .32 caliber Evert Johnson revolver beneath a handkerchief in his right hand. As McKinley extended his hand to greet him, Zalgos fired two shots at close range. One bullet grazed McKinley's shoulder, while the other penetrated his abdomen, causing severe internal injuries. McKinley was rushed to the exposition's emergency hospital, where doctors initially believed that his condition was not life-threatening. However, McKinley's condition deteriorated rapidly due to gangrene setting in at the site of the gunshot wound. Despite emergency surgery and the efforts of a team of physicians, McKinley's condition continued to worsen. 
On September 14, 1901, eight days after being shot, McKinley succumbed to his injuries and passed away at the age of 58. His death was met with widespread mourning and shock across the nation. 5. Juvenile Habirimina The assassination of President Juvenile Habirimina of Rwanda occurred on April 6, 1994, and it is considered one of the key events that sparked the Rwandan genocide, one of the most devastating atrocities of the 20th century. President Habirimina's plane, a Dassault Falcon 50, was shot down by surface-to-air missiles as it approached Kigali International Airport in Rwanda's capital city. The assassination of President Habirimina served as a catalyst for the genocide that followed. In the days and weeks following his death, extremist Hutu militias, backed by elements within the Rwandan government and military, launched a systematic campaign of violence against the Tutsi minority and moderate Hutus. Over the course of approximately 100 days, an estimated 800,000 people, predominantly Tutsis, were killed in acts of genocide. 4. Anwar Sadat Anwar Sadat, the president of Egypt, was assassinated on October 6, 1981, during a military parade commemorating the 8th anniversary of the 1973 Arab-Israeli War, also known as the Yom Kippur War. The assassination occurred at the reviewing stand in Cairo, where Sadat was seated alongside other dignitaries and foreign guests. The assailants were a group of Islamist extremists belonging to the Egyptian Islamic Jihad organization, led by Khalid Islambouli, a lieutenant in the Egyptian army who had been radicalized by Islamist ideology. As the military parade passed by the reviewing stand, Islambouli and his accomplices suddenly broke ranks and stormed the stand, brandishing assault rifles and throwing grenades. In the chaos that ensued, Sadat was struck by multiple bullets and suffered fatal injuries. Several other individuals, including high-ranking Egyptian officials and foreign diplomats, were also wounded in the attack. Sadat was rushed to a nearby military hospital but was pronounced dead shortly after arrival. 3. Mohandas Gandhi The assassination of Gandhi took place at the Birla House, where Gandhi was staying at the time. As Gandhi was making his way through a crowd of well-wishers and supporters, Gatsa approached him and fired three shots from a Beretta pistol at close range. Gandhi was struck in the chest and abdomen and collapsed to the ground. He was rushed to a nearby room, where he succumbed to his injuries shortly afterward. Gandhi was 78 years old at the time of his death. Gatsa and Apto were sentenced to death and were executed by hanging on November 15, 1949. The assassination of Mahatma Gandhi shocked the nation and the world, and it had profound repercussions for India's political landscape and its struggle for independence. 2. Abraham Lincoln Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States, was assassinated on the evening of April 14, 1865, while attending a play at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. The assassination occurred just days after the end of the American Civil War, a conflict that had deeply divided the nation over issues of slavery, states' rights, and the preservation of the Union. The assassin, John Wilkes Booth, was a Confederate sympathizer and a well-known actor. Booth sneaked into the presidential box at Ford's Theater where Lincoln was watching the play Our American Cousin with his wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, and two guests. At around 10.15 p.m., Booth approached Lincoln from behind and shot him in the back of the head with a single-shot Derringer pistol. After shooting Lincoln, Booth jumped from the presidential box onto the stage, shouting Six Emperor Tyrannies, which is Latin for thus always to tyrants, the state motto of Virginia. He then fled the theater, making his escape despite breaking his leg in the fall. Lincoln was immediately attended to by doctors who were in the audience, and he was carried across the street to the Peterson house where he was placed on a bed. Despite the efforts of the medical team, Lincoln never regained consciousness and passed away the following morning, on April 15, 1865, at the age of 56. The assassination of Abraham Lincoln sent shockwaves throughout the nation, which was already reeling from the effects of the Civil War. Lincoln's death was mourned by millions, and his assassination marked the first time a U.S. president had been killed while in office. It also sparked a massive manhunt for Booth and his co-conspirators, leading to Booth's death by federal troops 12 days later in a barn in Virginia. 1. John F. Kennedy The assassination of President John F. Kennedy occurred on November 22, 1963, in Dallas, Texas, while he was traveling in a motorcade through Dealey Plaza. Kennedy, the 35th President of the United States, was riding in an open convertible with his wife, Jacqueline Kennedy, Texas Governor John Connolly, and his wife, Nellie Connolly, when shots rang out. Kennedy was struck by two bullets, one in the upper back and one in the head, while Governor Connolly was also wounded. The motorcade rushed to Parkland Memorial Hospital, where Kennedy was pronounced dead approximately 30 minutes after the shooting. 
The official investigation into Kennedy's assassination, known as the Warren Commission, concluded that Lee Harvey Oswald, a former U.S. Marine and Marxist, acted alone in shooting Kennedy from the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository Building. Oswald was apprehended shortly after the assassination and was charged with Kennedy's murder. However, before he could stand trial, Oswald himself was shot and killed by Jack Ruby, a nightclub owner, while in police custody. The assassination of John F. Kennedy had a profound impact on the United States and the world. It shocked the nation and led to a period of mourning and reflection. Theories and speculation about possible conspiracies surrounding Kennedy's assassination have persisted for decades, despite the conclusions of official investigations. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it and want to see more content, don't forget to subscribe. We got a lot more coming.